My name is Kyle Graham. I work for the Fish and Wildlife Service out of Valentine, Nebraska. And I work for a, a program within Fish and Wildlife Service called the Partners for Fish and Wildlife. And this program is uh, primarily dedicated to working on private lands. And uh, the area that I spend most of my time uh, working in is the sand hills. And of course, a lot of our projects have to do with uh, wetland streams, uh, restoring the hydrology and, and the habitat that uh, goes along with that natural hydrology. So uh, we'll spend a little time here talking about the Sand Hills hydrology and, and the habitat and some of the unique things that uh, we see throughout the Sand Hills. This is a neat photo that um, like sometimes you have to get in, the, get in the air to appreciate the Sand Hills and the expanse and, and how much water there actually is. I've always had a hard time comprehending just how much water is uh, found within this this uh, sand hills landscape so this um, photo here has always helped me understand and and if you look here so the sand hills as a whole is roughly about 12 million acres and roughly about 1 million of the 12 million acres is uh, either wetlands or uh, lakes so wet uh, permanently or temporarily wet in nature so a lot of the sand hills is uh, relatively wet um, at certain times of year, and within within that within that context of the sand hills, uh, about one billion acre feet of of groundwater is stored, and and that's stored within these uh, sandy hills, and uh, basically it's just saturated sands. And uh, to give you a sense of how uh, how much water that is, it's it's uh, maybe a little arbitrary, but if you think of like a Lake McConaughey, uh, it'd be about 1,000 Lake McConaughey's um, at, at full pool. 1,000 Lake McConaughey's would be stored within the sand hills for groundwater, um, or in in the form of groundwater. So that gives you a sense of uh, how significant that amount of water is uh, locally, but uh, nationally as well. That's uh, an incredible amount of uh, of good high quality groundwater that's within this landscape. And if you zoom in a little further you see uh, what the sand hills looks like and this is an interesting um, picture here because it shows uh, as you can see where that that circles that you'll see this is uh, like out on the western sand hills and there's very little drainage. Um, the drainages are not very well defined therefore you tend to have a lot of alkali uh, wetlands and um, and very little drainage out of outside of uh, outside of the, the watersheds where the, the water is located but uh, more interestingly what you see is the further east you go you see these the valleys start to form and uh, this would be like in oh like maybe western Cherry County and you see uh, the lines and the, d the dunes um, start to run uh, south or northwest to southeast and so that water is uh, starting to drain east and this would be like the headwaters of the um, oh, like the Snake River and the Loop River systems as it as the water flows uh, east into uh, either the Platte River or the uh, Niobrara. I tend to think of the sand hills as a just a large pile of sand on a uh, on a slight grade and if you were to add water to it it's just slowly trickling out to the east and things work pretty well um, and we'll talk about that but the problems result was when that water starts to move too fast or the grade gets too steep and that's where you start to see some uh, really accelerated erosion and it causes um, typically causes a lot of troubles here we'll go through a series of slides that just I think we illustrates pretty well the um, the groundwater system and, and seasonally how that water fluctuates. So here, April, April, it's um, in theory it's supposed to be be wet. You've got a lot of water stored in the sand dune formations and it's slowly percolating down into these valleys where you typically have wetland streams, maybe a lake, and, and uh, you'll see water even on top of the surface in April. So water is, is actually mounded on top of water and it's typically at its highest elevation. So here we are in July. Um, obviously it's warmer, plants are growing, so you've got a lot of evaporation, transpiration, 
and there's less water being fed into these valleys than uh, the amount of water that's even that's being uh, transpired into the um, into the into the air and, and through evaporation. A little later on here we're in September so yeah September the plants are turning off and and um, you're starting to see more of that wa that water table come um, come back up as as um, the temperatures aren't so hot and the, the plants use use less water. So that would be like a, a natural or a normal cycle and we'll go through an, another cycle where things change and the groundwater table is is lower than what it naturally would be but uh, there's one unique thing that I've always been fascinated by in the sand hills and that is these uh, what they're called boiling springs I think there's a few different names but within the layers of sand you might have a, a layer of clay or some type of layer of, of material that's way harder than sand and so as that water is coming out of those sand dunes and it, it might uh, run into a layer of hard material and so that water uh, is pressurized and it, it um, there's hydraulic force behind it and that's where you find these unique features in some parts of the sand hills where the water is actually bo boiling uh, bubbling up uh, onto the surface and they're they're pretty unique and if you ever have a chance to I see one. They're they're pretty fun to uh, explore. Typically, there's more than one around, but that's a one unique feature that occurs uh, throughout the sand hills. So here's a, a, a similar uh, set of slides to what I had before, but the difference is here is like this stream is mu at a much lower elevation than what would naturally occur. So something happened here, whether it was uh, purposely lowered or um, an elevation got changed or whatever the, the stream is at a lower elevation so you still have high groundwater table typically early in the year but after that things things change dramatically so here you can see by mid-june uh, because that water is moving out of the system a lot faster than what would naturally occur the valley is drying out quickly and and the wetlands stream the stream typically still has water um, but the wetlands and lake become much more temporary in nature and as a result the, the vegetation changes so instead of having a lot of productivity um, associated with uh, wetlands the, the vegetation around wetlands and streams and what you might expect there it, it's, it changes and it might resemble more of what you'd see um, around the upland so less less haying potential and um, a less um, less native typically less fewer native plants that uh, that benefit wildlife in these type of valleys so here's a real world example this is um, uh, western cherry county and this this even though this lake or this stream here looks like it's uh, maybe somewhat natural it, it was uh, significantly uh, ditched uh, both above and below these this point but what you see here if, if you look closely is um, the closer you get to the stream, the drier the the land becomes. So you'll, what you'll see is um, um, more like uh, more upland species. The closer you get to the stream, and it's it's drying out. So there's actually less production, less pounds per acre, and therefore um, uh, less water. Less water. The waters uh, in this location, it's maybe uh, 10 feet uh, down. Uh, it's a little hard to tell from this slide. But uh, the water continues, the groundwater continues to be lower and lower every year. And as a result, the, uh, the, the valley dries up and, and it becomes less productive and the, the wetlands uh, disappear. So the thought is here is how do we raise the groundwater table back to a natural elevation? So where we do get those, those natural fluctuations where the water comes up, to, uh, maybe even above the surface, but then um, goes down uh, seasonally and how do we get back to that that type of scenario uh, and the key generally is here is the grade of the stream is much steeper than the grade of the actual valley so it's very unstable and the key here is to try to slow down the flow and match the grade of the stream to the grade of the valley here's another slide it's a little bit blurry but I think it illustrates the point pretty well that um, here's a stream that uh, there was actually a culvert at a lower uh, lower 
location than what you can see here in this this photo but uh, it was put in a, at an elevation that was lower than the stream and as a result the stream is um, kind of unraveling here it's down cutting and moving its way upstream and this is pretty typical of what happened so um, as you can see the the stream is moving its way up and before too long it'll drain functionally uh, drain everything that you can see upstream there so all the, I think there looks like a beaver dam and some some area where areas where a lot of groundwater is being stored and it looks like a, a good place for wildlife as well but those areas will uh, will tip will look different in a relatively short amount of time as this stream eats its way up because it, it is um, really unstable at this point and when streams get to this point where they become deeply uh, cut down and incised it is really hard to do very much within the stream we are we do have some projects where you can actually um, find a find an old old channel and take the water and actually put it back up on top and and fill in this um, this old existing channel uh, but uh, those are those are challenging so the the stream bottom is is uh, is obviously just sand so it's very unstable and if the grade is is too steep a lot of that sand is going to be picked up and taken downstream not to return again and and we don't have uh, rock obviously or wood or anything that really would hold these these streams together and we also have a challenge with uh, you know significant seasonal flows so um, the groundwater table is always moving and then um, uh, seasonally of course uh, you can have you know flooding in the sand hills especially when the ground has some frost so you can get giant shifts and in, in flow and and those type of things also are, are a real challenge to plan for when it comes to restoring these type of stream channels and of course uh, typically a, a wet meadow on a ranch is um, is that's where a, a large part of the production comes from so as these streams um, drop in, in, in elevation and become lower a lot of that production is gone and people become concerned because they remember a time uh, when the stream uh, looked different typically it was smaller and less in size and the, um, the hay meadow or the meadow whether it was grazed or hay produced more than it did uh, or does currently so here I'll just go through some of the different techniques we've tried and it's uh, certainly trial by fire as it comes to dealing with sandhill streams but there's a, a lot of, of work and thought that has gone into developing structures to uh, restore the hydrology to these streams over the last 20 years this is a kind of a unique structure it's just a, um, a basically a V that uh, kind of slopes down um, into the stream and you can see here how it's working where as the water elevation gets higher it, it comes up the sides and but more importantly here there's a what you can't see is there's a channel that actually goes around the structure so um, when the water gets real high not all of it would have to go around around this particular or go through this particular structure um, but over time uh, this valley was uh, extremely dry and just almost sand uh, but as that groundwater table is brought back up here you can see the the results in the amount of uh, vegetation that was um, that occurred after the, the groundwater table was brought back up here's another structure that um, is pretty significant um, and this particular landowner was concerned that um, a lot of the water was leaving his ranch at a record speed and he wanted that water to be stored and and to go vertically rather than um, down the stream channel and be gone within a month or two versus um, storing that water in the ground in the <clears throat> in the ground for um, a long period of time and having you know more production and then um, of course all the wildlife benefit that benefits that coming come from having a having a wetland um, on your property that functions well this is a kind of an odd looking structure but it's one that's worked very well on the sand hills it's uh, basically just a culvert as you can see with a, um, a, a piece out of the, the front end and then a big metal plate welded on the the very front so in a stream that's uh, down cutting and at a, a low lower than natural elevation by putting by putting this structure in the water is forced to come up 
in this case by by three feet and uh, it slows it down and a lot of the sand actually uh, or sediment that's in this in the water actually drops out um, and uh, fills in the channel so there's kind of the slow process of building the channel uh, back up to its natural elevation and and this structure has been very uh, useful it's, as you can see it's very easy to put in and uh, we have a lot of these throughout the sand hills that particular structure that we just looked at is uh, there's one located where this arrow is and this was a location a big wide uh, wet meadow that was actually farmed at one time and now it's um, in a grazing system but uh, the landowner was concerned again about uh, all that water being shipped down that that ditch in a let's say a month out of the year and, and what what would happen if we could store that groundwater and basically you know sub irrigate um, this big wet meadow and then um, that's interesting to those of us that are uh, thinking about the wildlife aspects because as you can see from this photo there's a tremendous amount of wildlife benefit um, in, in, in this case migratory uh, waterfowl habitat that comes from um, that structure as as the the groundwater raises by two or three feet it's enough to make all these uh, seasonal uh, wetlands appear that were um, were absent due to the uh, the ditch and the lowered groundwater table in this scenario so just in summary here it it truly is the the high water table and the quality of the water and the quantity of the water that supports this this great diversity of, of wildlife that we we enjoy in the sand hills and makes it a desirable place for water and once the water is um, is not there or something changes it it um, it has dramatic sh effect on these um, these wet meadows and in the wetlands that occur there in the lakes and also the the native grasses which uh, really makes this whole system work and I'll put my contact information here for anybody that would be interested or knows of places where we could do some good when it comes to restoring these these streams or wetlands and and I uh, hope we hope you learned something and I'll look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.